Howdy, I'm Jason Lewis, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make rad automotive-based YouTube videos like this. Today on the Auto Edit Jeep, we're going on an adventure. That's right, we're driving this thing from Los Angeles to Seattle the hard way. Also, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to install. Let's get going. Do you hear that? Oh, man. And I've been able to do all of that with a very rudimentary amount of video gear and some tips and tricks I'll pass on to you in this video. So come on inside the garage, I'll bring you around and I'll show you first off what we got here and then some of the techniques. So here are some of the basics in my kit. The key here is to use whatever you have to tell a story. And here we are at Mangle Pass. We're making really good time today. This is the only part that actually requires a little bit of off-roading. You'll find that GoPros or any of these little mini cameras are very important, so get as, get as many of those as you can afford. As you can see here, I have one GoPro Hero 4. This is the silver, not the black, okay? Now, I like the silver because it has the screen built in. So that's just a personal preference. This is an old GoPro Hero. Look at that thing. Old school, but it works, you know? And I have this contour. So what you wanna do is just make sure you get a camera that shoots a resolution, a minimum resolution. So I'm, I do everything for YouTube at 1080p, and that's my goal. Audio is a really important thing, and it gets forgotten. So uh, any like type of wireless microphone kit right here, like this is a, a Sennheiser E100. You can get these things on Craigslist or Amazon or eBay for pretty cheap now. Um, now, cheap is relative. And then you'll also want an assortment of mounts. Now I have a couple of clamp mounts here. Now, <laughs> you'll laugh. This one right here, I broke on my very last trip into Death Valley with the Jeep. Then you have a, a couple of suction cup mounts here. Um, I like these. These are by Fat Gecko, and I forget who makes these. These are this is this is a mixture of Panavice and Belkin, I think, make that. And then I have this one no garm. Now this stuff is this junk right here is expensive, but they're really cool. Um, this right here is like a hundred bucks just for the arm, and then you got to buy the clamp. This is called a Mafer clamp. Get these little. Uh, I get this little uh, mini tripod here, and then this is called gaff tape right here. So that's the basics of this part of the kit, of the, of the meat and potatoes of the kit. This is the, my Canon 5D. Now this is, you know, obviously a little bit bigger and bulkier, and I'll show you what I use this for. And right now, I don't really use this. I don't even take it with me on the, the trips, or sometimes if I do, it never comes out of the bag because I found a way to implement this in the Osmo um, to use as my primary camera. Now this, when you're doing an install, is really nice because you could use this as a cutaway camera. Now let me explain that to you. Now when you're doing an install or a how-to and you're doing a task on the car or something technical, you're going to have some sort of detail. And so this with a longer lens. And so I'll use that as the cutaway. Another thing, another tip that you can do when you're doing stand-ups like this and you don't want to do that jump cut that you see, and you can actually use a second camera to cut away to as well. Works really great for pulling up times when you misspeak or something. So. Um, but yeah, so that's the 5D. Hardly use it anymore. It's a great camera. This is an old, old, old one. Probably eight years old. But it works. It's there. I'm going to show you the Osmo that I've been using. Now, I'm talking to that Osmo right now, but I'm going to use my iPhone. That's a good, t like, kind of a little tip. Use everything in your power. It's a collage. You're going to use all of these things to weave a story together. So don't be afraid to use anything around you. So use your phone. When you use it properly, it will go into your videos, and you're not gonna try to kid anybody that you're not shooting phone video, but if it's complimentary to the story, then it's perfect. So now I'm gonna cut to the phone and show you my setup on the Osmo. 
Now here is the Osmo Plus, and it's pretty nice. And this shows you my wireless microphone, goes right into here, so I get good solid audio. And you can also put a little shotgun mic when you want more natural sounds. And so that's it. And then tripod, that's another important thing. I have a couple of different tripods. This is not a very expensive one. Um, and then I even have lower end ones than that. Let me take you over and show you that. So I use that tripod right there, not very good, right? So you can see you use everything at your disposal to weave these videos together. Now it's up to you and your creativity on how you want to present that to the viewer. So right out of the gate, let me show you a couple of things here. We got the two camera setup that I was just mentioning. Now normally you'd be a little bit more clever and put the second camera a little bit farther away and that's where the longer lens come in, comes into play. But, see now I just stumbled there, watch this. I could actually cut that out with clever editing. Now normally you'd be a little bit more clever and put the second camera a little bit farther away and that's where the longer lens comes into play because I could cut to my hand or any of the movement that I'm doing down here, cut back to this guy, the on-camera thing, without having the jump cut. Um, but Right, right now what I'm going to show you is just the basics of the two camera setup. So this one's focused on the details here. This one's focused on the person yapping at the camera, me right now. Now what I'm going to do right now is show you how I get my microphone and my audio setup. Now this is an older uh, wireless microphone setup here and this is what's called a lavalier mic. And this is what you're going to want to have attached to you. Now they have these little clips here that you could use um, to attach this to your lapel or something here. Um, I don't use that. I'll show you a little pro tip right here. Use your gaff tape or something like that and you create a little, so make sure you have your little windscreen or some sort of little screen on there and you just put that sucker right in there. You have your little detail camera picking that up here. You just apply, I stick this, it's, it's underneath my shirt. So you would stick that under, so it would basically look like this and you put that right about here, speaking level. Now the thing you gotta watch out for are seat belts. So if you're a driver in America, <laughs> your seat belt will go across your left shoulder down to your hip. So you just make sure you put that out of the way of that because that'll go and that would be bad audio. Um, so obviously uh, accommodate stuff like that, but this is the basics of getting audio. And that's what I've been doing all this time. And that's what I actually do under it every day is just do this. Now there's other fancier ways to get this across. They make little sticky things that will actually work um, and stick that inside your shirt. But that's the basics of audio and the two camera setup for cutaways. And then this is my microphone that I put on the exterior of the car to get sound of the vehicle. Now I don't always do that. Sometimes the GoPro is good enough. Um, and what I do is just tape this someplace. This is just a cheapy lavalier mic that I bought at Radio Shack years ago. Um, and I tape this outside the car someplace, it has a long cord that I can actually record inside the car. And that's what one of these cameras are for. Um, this is just a cheapy handheld camera. And I use this primarily for recording audio. Uh, they make specific de devices that do that. It's called a zoom. Um, but this is the very inexpensive way to do that. So now let's move to some exterior car mounts. So here's a good example of how I like to mount a camera on the exterior of a vehicle. Now, I like suction cups, obviously. That's the easiest way. Um, this is one of the Fat Gecko dual suction cup mounts here. So I like, now this is a thing, a personal preference I think works best for me and aesthetically it works best um, I think in the videos. Now a lot of people what they'll do is they'll mount a camera and they don't give foreground. Now what you'll see on these cameras here, the, the GoPros have a pretty awesome way of giving you wide, medium, or narrow view. And so on this one right here, medium is a little bit too tight, so I will put it at, I will adjust it. So you use all of those things to your advantage to get yourself the best view. Now what, what I'm going to do here is, let's go ahead and just roll this so you'll get an idea of seeing what 
what this looks like. So what I would do is I would frame this up right about like this to give me a little bit of foreground. Now I got this cool sticker, this Willwood logo here. I'll use that as a little marker. Now remember, this tire's off the ground, so the, the ground would be right about here. So you can see that when you cut to this camera of what that would look like. You get the horizon set and you give, like, I don't know what's happening out over here. Sometimes that, that's important, but once you see this shot, this is a nice shot. And the tire will be spinning and turning and looking all sorts of awesome. And you'll get that, this angle right here. And that's what I like, this camera angle. A lot of times you'll see this view and people will turn this camera like this, you know, like you're shooting out here for some reason. And, you know, you have all of this empty space and the thought process is, well, that's what's moving and what's awesome. No. The car is what's moving and what's awesome. Shoot the car, and there's still plenty of room here for awesomeness and scenery going by. Quick shout out to ET Wheels for my rad wheels here. Can't wait to get this car running. So this gives you a good example of just a quick setup shot for looking forward, um, showing this, and you know this is great for suspension and doing all of that stuff. So this is the standard forward-facing wheel action shot. You can use this for quite a bit of time in your video, and that's what I like about some of these shots. There are certain angles on the exterior of the car that I think only play for a second or two, so you have to kind of take that into account when you're getting those shots. Let me show you a shot that I see a lot that just doesn't make, it doesn't do me any good. I don't think it does the video any good um, for long periods of time. And it's a simple mistake a lot of people make. Watch this. All right, so now for the forward facing shot or the overhead shot looking forward on the rig, car, whatever, truck, whatever it is. Now, the common mistake I see here is people putting this, this camera either on the hood and facing forward and not seeing any of the vehicle or on the front bumper at the very front of the vehicle shooting forward. Now that's one of those shots that I was mentioning a moment ago that is pretty cool for a few seconds. But I feel that without giving relationship or foreground to that shot, the viewer loses something. So what you want to do or what I like to do is, now this is, I'm just doing this very quick. The horizon might be off a little bit, but, or the dimensions, but you'll get the idea that the hood being in the foreground here and whatever awesome terrain you may see in front of it or that we're coming at will have relationship. This is the vehicle. This gives the viewer a base point from where you're viewing from. And I believe that all your shots should have something cool like that. Or if you're going to do one of those fancy shots out the front or something like that, it'll only be good for a few seconds inside the video before you kind of lose relationship. So this, incorporate foreground in your shots. So now what I just did was change the view angle from wide on the GoPro to medium to give you an idea of what that changes. Now I would adjust that up, change the horizon a little bit, and what this will do is changing from wide. Wide is neat because it gives you all the scope, but medium, if you're trying to relate speed, um, that wide angle shot is great, but what it'll do is it'll, even if you're moving fast, because it's so wide, it'll lose the impression of speed. Now this will kind of focus that back in. You do lose some of the scenic stuff, so it's the draw, it's the trade-off there. So I just wanted to show you that. Okay, so let's get the interior shot, the go-to camera on the windshield that you talk to the most. Um, that shot's pretty important because you cut to it a lot and that's where you do all your jibber-jabber into this thing and you're wheeling and looking awesome. Um, so make that right. Now, this is an important shot that could go, you know, over here, you can put it, but here it's nice by the rear view mirror because it's kind of hidden or it blends in um, and it doesn't get in the way of driving. So, and I like, as my preference, to keep it about eye line with the driver. If you have it too low, like really low and far away, then it gets a little weird and looks up at the driver, but sometimes in the vehicle you're in, that's just the way it's gonna be. So I have the focal length on this GoPro at medium. That's pretty wide for the distance. Now in the Jeep, medium with the windshield right here, it's great. Like when I did the Death Valley trip just recently, I did everything at medium and it was nice. When I did medium right here in the truck, it incorporates a lot of the back and that's actually pretty good because I had Pinto back there and you know we were off road and she was just being cute as can be and I would rather see her than me to be honest with you. So that's the way I set that one up. 
on purpose. So you want to set this camera up so that gives you that reference. Again, you want reference and foreground. So you want to see hands on the steering wheel. You don't want to be too tight on the person's face, but you don't want to be too wide either. Like wide right there would just be too much of the cab and just, you know, you get farther away. And now here's another personal preference, I believe pro tip. When you are driving and you are talking to this camera and you're engaging the viewer, don't have sunglasses on. Your eyeballs are how you connect with the viewer or how the viewer perceives to connect with you. So when you put sunglasses on and shield the viewer from that, I think that that's a, that's a, a no-no, personally. I don't like seeing that, and if you're gonna be talking to me, I'll connect with you better without that. So, that's my personal preference and recommendation. So, no sunglasses if you're gonna be this close. Now, if you're out and about and in the world doing stuff, yeah, wear your shades, I get it, but Right now, it's all about connection. So that's my recommendation, and this is the setup here. Now let me explain to you how I would do my audio or record audio once I'm inside the car, because right now I'm recording right to the Osmo, so I have that pack still on the Osmo. But when you're in the car, this is your wireless, or if you have the plug right from your microphone, that's where these little handy cams come in. You just make sure that it has a mini jack input for audio and you would plug that in there and then you would roll your, and this is another pro tip right here, you would roll your GoPro, roll your audio or this camera, and you could actually even set this up someplace and get a shot, and then you do a little honk. This is what we do all the time. I'll roll all my GoPros, roll the audio, and then you go and that way you sync all the cameras in your edit software. We'll get to that later editing. That's a whole other thing. But, so that's how we do the interior. All right, Pinto, hop on in. So let's talk the basics of lighting. Now, there's a ton of different things. I try to utilize natural light as best as I can. Now, there's times like when you're inside the garage or inside this car here where you want to augment the lighting. Now, I'll show you the two little auxiliary lights that I use. So improvise, do the best you can, but don't put us in the dark. Let me show you the lights that we have here. All right, come on, Pinto. I'll get your ball, don't worry. These are the soft boxes that I got online for about 65 bucks, and they are simply reflectors with a slight diffusion screen on the front. And I use daylight balanced bulbs. So let's talk about the thing that takes the most amount of time sometimes to do, and that's editing. Now I use Avid Media Composer. Now I use a really old version of it. This is version 7, which happened like five or seven years ago. Um, still works. This is an old computer. Bought it, again, about somewhere between five and seven years ago. Still works. Um, and this is where you know, it's gonna take you the most amount of time to put this stuff together. So this is where you'll learn and grow. But here's what you need to do. Just spend the time and do it. Now, I have friends that cut really good content on iMovie or Windows Movie Maker, so it doesn't matter what you cut it on. There's Premiere, Final Cut, all of those different things. Just find one you like or you have access to and just start cutting. Here's the pro tip on that. Have fun, make stories. I'm a storyteller, so this is just the part that I love, and this is why I do these videos, and this is why I wanna share this with you guys. When you're doing car-based stuff, and you just slather music all the way throughout and you drown out engines and tires and, and going over rocks and stuff, don't do that. That's bad. If we're watching cars doing things, we want to hear those cars doing things. So concentrate on getting good audio and then sharing that with the viewer. Just don't wallpaper the audio, the music, loud over that stuff. So, pro tip, engine sounds, car sounds, better than music most of the time. And there are a lot of times during some of the installs that I'm doing, I will just put a ton of music in the background just to help drive it along because I find myself really boring. So I feel bad for you guys, so I try to entertain you a little bit more and put some music or something there. So this is what I use. It's not for everybody. There's some Pinto up there. Um, but that's the edit process. 
So there you have it, a crash course into making a little bit better automotive-based YouTube videos. Now, some of these techniques apply, obviously, to whatever else you're passionate about, and that's kind of the key here. Just find something that you love. We, I love, we love uh, cars, so I wanna share that. But just go out and make rad videos. That's the point of this. That's what we're here for. Enjoy this stuff. Now, don't forget to follow me, AutoEditJason, at Instagram if you get a chance, or please subscribe and share this video and subscribe to the AutoEdit YouTube channel. I appreciate that, and that enables me to make a bunch more videos. So until next time, enjoy your drive and go out and have some fun making videos.